Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Game Dev Tycoon. Ninja Geddon was the flop that we made a while ago and I've probably talked about it a couple of times in the last couple of episodes. I don't know why it was a flop, I thought I'd done everything right. And the episode where I made that had now gone out and you guys all let me know um, the reason why is because my workers hadn't gone on vacation. Uh, but what kind of annoyed me is the level of frustration and anger in the comments, you know. Now, there's going to be quite a lot of you that are watching that this applies to. Some of you are probably thinking, well, I didn't mind Asumi, you know, it's just the game after all. Um, but there are a lot of people that were getting frustrated and angry, and I don't mind if you're angry at me because i done something wrong in the game, that's fine. Uh, but I kind of get worried that you're angry about someone playing, you know, a video game, someone recording them playing it and creating entertainment for you when there are, you know, bigger things in life that should make you angry than something like that. And uh, when I was reading through the comments, I just, I don't know, I just found it a little baffling that some people could get so upset, you know, there are lots of uh, comments of people writing in capitals, talking about face palming, and you know what, it's just a game, I just play this to chill out and relax and have a good time with you guys as well, and have fun playing this game, and it's a game, you know, you're going to make mistakes, you're not going to do everything perfectly, and plus it's a new game to me, it's one that I've only just started playing, in fact you've pretty much seen me play it. Um, all the way through. I've played a couple of off-camera games but it's not something like Minecraft where my knowledge of it is just known inside out and so I'm bound to make mistakes and watching it you should just you know tune in and have a good time watching the game and if someone makes a mistake don't worry about it because if you're getting wound up and frustrated over watching someone else play a game it's just not healthy um, and yeah I was just really concerned by it so you know I'm gonna make more mistakes in this game it's inevitable that it will happen um, at the same time, we've done loads of things right as well. You can see we've got a successful business going here. Um, so when you see me do something wrong, feel free to let me know in the comments because there's actually some things I want to go over this episode. Um, but there is seriously no need to get frustrated about it. It's just a game, you know. So I just wanted to uh, point that out at the beginning of this episode here. And hopefully I won't make the same mistake again. You guys have well and truly pointed it out to me. Um, so hopefully we'll keep all of our staff nicely um, trained up and ready to work. And that's also probably why my games after that have been so, so successful is because they're usually all recharged um, right before I start a game. Um, but what I want to do this episode is actually fire some of our staff. I've seen it in the comments that some people are saying we should get rid of Suzanne and Dennis because they don't really specialise in anything. And I might get rid of one or both of them. Um, but also I've been learning a few extra things as well so let's go over them quickly um, in our custom game engine we have support for mods and apparently this will increase your fan base and it's actually something that the game told us now what you got to remember with, when playing a game like this is you know that things that you do affect other things um, but sometimes they're a little bit bizarre for example if we had a steering wheel into a game that has nothing to do with racing that actually increases the rating of that game and so other things like that you know it's not always going to follow some logical statement like just because it's called mod support doesn't mean um, it has any particular effect but in this case it does um, so there might be things like that with other you know other settings here that we have to learn about over time as well but that means one thing we want to do now is always add mod support so we get more fans and um, we're coming up to half a million fans which is actually really great we can start releasing um, bigger games for that I've forgotten what type of game but someone's left a comment about that so that's one thing we always want to add mod support so we get a few extra fans um, another thing as well about our staff now research here I thought that was the rate that they done research at that was something that I assumed and some people have told me that actually uh, like design and technology they are the little bubbles that fly up to the top so I think it's a very good idea that we hire someone who has a large amount of research because we are kind of falling behind on keeping up to date with all the latest things um, you know all the little things we add to our game engine and apparently having the R&D center as well will contribute to that so as we um, develop things over there apparently some technology bubbles should come through so we should look out for that um, and just try and increase the rate of research now speed obviously applies to the rate that bubbles are made at so everyone should be trained in speed which means we really do need um, some more research so we're going to focus a lot on training now I think what we want to do is kind of coast along with the amount of money that we have um, but really just upgrade our staff so the quality of our games can increase um, yeah and we want to make more specialists as well so let's have a look I'm an all-rounder obviously I'm not going to fire myself so I think I should look at doing is just keeping um, all of my 
excuse me, different areas here, in, you know, increasing at a gradual rate. Um, so I'm kind of just good at everything, and the speed as well would be very nice to have there. Um, Sergio is obviously a tech guy. Luke is a design guy, so we'll focus on those. But if we have a look at Suzanne and Dennis, they don't really do too much, do they? Now, um, they're both quite good with speed, especially Dennis. However, if they're not going to be specialised in anything, then they're not really going to be con contributing a lot. So we're probably going to get rid of both of those and replace them um, with someone who has maybe a lot of speed in design and speed in tech. And also we need someone to do research as well. Um, so Paul Reed here, he's actually got quite a large amount of research as well as design and a lot of speed, which makes him uh, the guy to be the research guy. So that's what we'll start training in, him in. And we'll get more research bubbles that way. And so Sebastian Todd has uh, the high technology, decent speed, um, so we have basically two tech guys, one design guy, Paul Reed is going to be our research guy, um, so what we need to do is get rid of Dennis and Suzanne and bring in someone with high design to work alongside Luke Harper, and then the other person, I don't know. <laughs> so that's my plan for this episode, I actually want to try and do a little bit of training, uh, but I'm going to make a cut right now. And then figure out what I'm do, what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to start off with uh, hiring and firing stuff. Okay, you may have noticed that we've actually taken a step back in time slightly there. I don't know what the hell happened, but something went wrong with the screen. It locked out on the R&D lab, and then I couldn't do anything. Um, so I had to load up a save game. But anyway, uh, what we're going to do is increase the budget here so we get an extra person, which is at one million. So we want to get more research points with that. We have 170, and we want to be keeping our eye on that and see if we get any more from it like someone said in the comments um, but we're gonna fire Suzanne and Dennis now yep it's time for them to go and then we are gonna hire some people as well so we want someone who's good at design and then someone who's mixed that maybe we could focus on research or speed or something like that and um, we're gonna go for a million here I'm gonna go all the way up we need to be careful with our budget we do have 157 million but um, we're spending a lot on the R&D lab as well um, so while we're searching for people, let's do a bit of training. Now Luke is our design guy. We made him a specialist, didn't we? But not in one of these particular areas. Now I'm not sure if you can actually train for multiple ones of these. Um, it'd be interesting to know and then I'd have to start keeping some notes for like um, Luke has to do gameplay or this every time. But that would really make um, a boost to that I'd imagine. So that's something we're going to be doing in the future anyway. Um, let's put him on, let's see, what do we need? A little bit more speed, I think, to increase the amount of design points we're getting. So something with speed and design um, would be good. Although there isn't one, there's just the product, product management course, which does speed. Um, so we'll put him on that one. And we're probably going to do a round of speed for everyone here. So let's have a look. Yeah, speed's a little bit lacking for the technology. So product management course for you. Then Paul Reed, we're going to do something different with because he's going to be our research guy and he's already got a lot of speed as well, which is good. So we'll put him on the R&D course, which is for research. And then we've got, okay, never mind. <laughs> we're now hiring new people. Um, so that's not good enough, obviously. Too slow. Um, decent. Oh, look at that. Look at the design level there. Really fast. Some research as well. I think she might get the job. Let's have a look. Uh, Dennis wants to come back here. No, thanks. Um, although, does he have different stats? Maybe it's not the same Dennis, or it's just used the same name and thrown together some stats, I don't know. Um, so Lillian as well, not good enough with the speed, although there's a lot of research there. I think it's clear who we're going to employ. We're going to employ Jennifer, and we do need another person as well, but no one here I think really stands out. We want someone with an even split as well, so we'll hire her. And actually, I think she's going to be very good with the high speed there and design. And then we will look for more people as well. So we'll go up to a million again and go for the game demo. So we get a mix of both tech and design. And so let's have a look at this fellow whose name I've forgotten. And we want to train you. Okay, this is Sebastian Todd. So he has technology. Um, speed is actually pretty good. So I think we will just train him in tech, which is the programming course. Okay, so now, oh, must not forget about me as well. <laughs> What could I do? Um, well, I'm an all-rounder. I think I need to increase my speed and also research. So we'll probably do the product management called, uh, course for speed first and then get the research going up after it. And uh, these aren't multipliers, by the way. Apparently, they're just boosts. I don't know really what the difference is there. 
Um, so let's have a look at these new people anyway. Okay, nice human split. A bit low on research. That looks quite good. Philip. Yeah, that looks like um, a decent spread of points there. Hmm, let's just go over these quickly again. See, I like this guy because he's over 400 and almost 400 on research as well as having high tech and a fair amount of design. Yeah, I think we're going to go with Philip. So we'll hire Philip. And we have definitely improved our staff now. So overall, we have um, a good bunch of people here. And I'll. Oh, didn't we just do this a moment ago? Oh no, I had to roll back my game, of course. Okay. Because it crashed. <laughs> So, you need to do the welcome to the staff training, and so do you. Okay, so everyone has been trained up. Um, also, I was going to send them all on vacation, uh, but it wouldn't let me, so I started doing some contract work, and actually they recharged themselves up while doing that, which was interesting. Um, but anyway, we're going to do another game. We're actually going to make an action RPG game again, which is what we made on the Mbox 360 last time we made a game. However, we've made one in between, so I don't think we're going to get uh, punished for that. I've talked about that plenty of times already, so I'm sure you know what I'm on about. Um, but we're going to make a game for everyone. It's going to be a large game. It's going to be on the topic of aliens. So we're going to do an action RPG. We're going to call this one Invasion as well. Like that. Um, and then we're going to use our latest game engine. So I was thinking that we do need to do some research. Hopefully we'll be able to pick up more research points. And doing those contracts as well, you can see I now have 70. So I gained 50 from doing that. Um, haven't got any from the R&D lab yet that I've noticed. So anyway, let's click on next. And yep, we want the 3D graphics. I think we have to research Mark 6. So that might be um, something to do after we've researched the MMO. Um, and now it's time to do the sliders again. Now what we found recently is that actually they select all of the right things for us the way um, that we would do it. But this being a combo game means um, that sliders are going to be slightly different from normal. So we want about that and that and not so much on story and quest. No, sorry, what I'm on about this is an RPG game. So something um, like that looks good to me. And we got to remember to put in mod support as well. That's now very important. Um, so Luke will be doing the gameplay, which sounds about right. Um, Sebastian Todd, it really has selected the right people for each job, hasn't it? Although we've got no one over on story and quests at the moment, so why don't we put one of our new guys on that? We're going to put Paul Reed on. Oh wait, he's not a new guy. <laughs> we will put... Eh, we'll put Paul Reed on it. There we go. Okay, so uh, we want to include as many things on the side here as we can, so let's try and put the advanced ones in. Let's slide that up a touch. Save to cloud, basic physics, we'll go with that like that. Okay, and that's everything done. So we want to do a little bit of marketing early on as well. And by the way, I had um, a G3 booth and I just paid for the smallest one since we didn't have a game coming out and loads and loads of people turned up. And I think we've really boosted up our fans at the moment, which is what we're going to be doing again with this game. Okay, so a new platform has been released. And look at those bubbles go everywhere. Wow, we've got like 150 on each already. I think hiring our new staff members was a great idea. <laughs> so uh, the second part of this, we want less focus on dialogues, more on the level design and the AI to some extent. So something like that looks okay. And can we add that? Yes, we can. There we go. So we can add all the things there. Um, so who is going to do what? Well, we are going to put one of our new guys, Jennifer Cavendish, 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 I think that is, on dialogues, um, on the level design. I think we should put Paul, no, not Paul Reed, um, myself, which is what I'm doing. Okay, that's fine. And then Sergio is on the artificial intelligence, which is mainly tech. So yeah, all of that is good. And we will use the boosts this time. I completely forgot to do that. And now we're going to do a bit more marketing, increase the hype. We're going to go with magazines and demos. And in the final stage, I think we're going to go all out with this game. Because um, look at those points rolling in. And bugs. We'll probably end up with over 100 bugs at the end of this one as well. And tons of research points as well. This is excellent. Okay, so the final stage of the slide is right here. Um, we need to have... Focus on well design, mainly graphics, not so much sound, something like that looks cool. 
Is that worth putting up? Probably not. We'll put it like that. Um, so well designed, we want as many of these as we can fit in. Maybe not that one. Okay, so those three will do. Um, that's all we can select on that side. So who's going to do what? It's only put Paul Reed on and not two of these others. Um, yeah, so I think what we will do is put... I can't do any more. We want someone with an even split on the graphics, but actually I think we're going to have to go with... Philip on the graphics, on um, world design, maybe we'll do Jennifer again, there we go, she's not overworked so that's good, and Paul Reed on the sound, um, that looks really good actually, can we put Luke on that though, he will be overworked, so if we drag that down a touch, then that looks good to me, okay let's go with that, and so we're probably going to get a record on both design and tech again, and now all I need to do is some marketing, so we're going to go all out with a large campaign here. We're going to put 2 million into that one. And since we just started the development of this game, we've actually lost over 10 million. So we need to make a lot of money with this one. Uh, but the hype is really good. That's very high. And we're definitely going to hit a record on the design and tech points. That's ridiculous at the moment. Okay, so getting rid of the bugs. Never seen so many bugs in one of our games. And we've got tons and tons of research points from that. I think hiring the staff really did make a huge difference there. Okay, now we're just going to wait around for a bit. Wait for that hype to drop and get a few extra points here and there. Looking good. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> yep, a record on both. Got some good multipliers there as well. Leveled up on the old 3D graphics and almost some staff leveling up, but everything there is nice. Okay, so release the game. And the reviews have come in. It looks good. It is a 9, that's excellent. Maybe a 10, another 9. An 8, not so good there. And a 7? Oh, <laughs> we're doing so well there. Well, it's still a good game overall. Let's hope that it sells. And we need to do a round of training right now. So Luke, what are you going to be trained in? Um, I think we need to focus on design again, although we could afford one of these specializations now, but I don't know, there's still things we need to research for the game engine, so maybe we won't do that. Uh, but maybe we should just put him on a game design course, that's mainly design. That'll suit him. And then Sergio, what are you going to be trained on? I think we're going to get your speed up again. Actually no, you're lacking a bit on technology, so we'll go with a programming course. And now for our new staff, Sir Philip. Okay, this guy is our even split guy. Uh, but he's lacking a bit on design, so we need to put him on a game design course. And then Jennifer is our researcher, I do believe. Nope. Oh, she's our design specialist. Okay, that's cool. So another game design course there. And Paul Reed is our research guy, I must remember that. So we're going to put you on the research course, which is the R&D one. Okay, that's cool. Oh, the sales have come in. That is a lot of sales. We will look at that right after we've done um, the training. So Sebastian being our tech guy, his tech is already very high, so I think we should focus on speed with him. And then myself, um, let's do some training. Mm, I think I'm going to go with the game design course, or maybe I should do the tech one actually, bring that up to speed a bit. Yeah, we'll go on a programming course. Okay, that's cool. So let's have a look at the sales. Uh, we're just starting to turn a profit. It looks like maybe overall we might not make a lot on this game. I don't know, we'll have to see how the sales do, but we brought in a few fans. Not as much as perhaps we have brought in in the previous games, although we have developed quite a few in a row here. Hmm, I think we might have to look at developing a new game on a new console, which would go alongside our new um, game engine as well really nicely. Uh, but the thing is we spent loads of our research points as well, so we're going to have to do some more work. Um, I'm going to go with a medium booth this time. Uh, it's a shame we don't have a game coming out at the moment, but the sales are rolling in slowly. And overall we're probably going to make a loss on this game, so I think it's about time we started um, making more games by ourselves and not using the publishers. Okay, so for fans of the Mbox, the long await for the update to the console will soon be over. So they're going to be releasing the next one before long. I guess we're going to be developing games on that. 
And can we send people on vacation? Yes, we can now that they're in the red. Okay, let's do that. And I think what I'm going to do is some contract work so we can get some more research points, develop some things to add to our um, to our new game engine and then perhaps we can release that within a game on the new console which would be very good. Um, but for, bleh, before I make a cut let's just see how many people turn up. Uh, last time I think it was 900,000 so maybe we can hit a million. Yes we've hit a million. Uh, maybe that will put us in the top 10. Let's have a look. 28. Not bad. We are doing better and better each time. Okay, after doing the contract work we have 170 research points, it's not enough to research things for a new game engine, so we do need another game. Um, and I thought what we would do is we'd end this episode with a little bit of progress, I'm actually going to do all the sliders and all of that stuff off camera, and hopefully we can make a lot of research points with the development of this game, and also um, some money as well. So in the next episode what we can do is uh, yeah, develop our new game engine. Um, so what I want to do here is a movie simulation game aimed at a young audience, it's going to be a large game, it's called The Director, with the latest game engine, but this one we're actually going to release on this platform right here, the Woo. I thought that would be cool to do, although it does cost a million for a license. <laughs> um, and it does have a lower market share as well, but I thought it would just be nice to do a game on a different console, so we're going to do that. Um, a million isn't really a lot, but if you have a look at our money, and uh, we haven't really made a lot of gains, uh, gains since the last game, we've actually lost 5 million. Um, so anyway, click on next and I'm going to do all of these sliders and stuff off camera. Okay, I'm getting rid of the bugs and look at the hype. I invested 2.5 million into um, the marketing on this one and the design and technology points are very, very high again. I'm not sure if we're going to break a record on the design, but definitely on the tech, I think. Um, so here you can see I'm just letting a few more bubbles rise up to the top um, before the hype goes down. And I've got a feeling that this one is going to sell a lot. And okay, that will have to do. Let's find the new. Actually, no, I don't want to finish it just yet. Now we can. Okay, um, the new Xbox console came out as well. Okay, as I said, uh, the design got a record. We've got all the multipliers here as well. Loads of people leveled up. That's good to see. Let's release this game. That's fine. All of that's good. And so what we're actually going to do now is do a little bit of research, ready for our next engine. So let's start that and then the sales will come in and the reviews as well and we can check out all of that. So do I want to get the stereoscopic thing? Yeah, might as well. It only costs 40 points, so we will do that. And I'm not going to research too much of the sound stuff. Let's get... Hmm, what to get? <laughs> um, I think gameplay and maybe story and quests because we do a lot of RPG games. Although things that apply to everything would be good, so we'll definitely do the gameplay ones. Okay, the director reviews have come in. We have a 10. Yes, this is good. Another 10. Okay, cool. Three 10s, maybe even four. No, <laughs> still haven't got four 10s, but a 9.75 is fantastic. So let's do a little bit more research. Um, so it was the gameplay I wanted to go for. So we've got all of that now. Uh, we have 219 research points left. Let's go for online play and maybe that world design one as well. Um, so we will research, which I can't seem to select, there we go, okay, it's very awkward that. So you will do, hmm, actually I think I want to go for the cheapest things here. So let's see if there's anything below 80, I'm seeing all 80s at the moment. Um, another thing we need is some new topics as well, so that's something we'll do with the leftover points. And actually if we look at the amount of points we have at the moment, um, we should probably just do one of these ones that costs 100. So we are going to go with advanced physics. And then the last two guys here, you can research some new topics. That would always be good for some more combinations. And we're going to do cyberpunk there. And you are going to research martial arts, that one. We'll do that. Okay, a whole bunch of things have just happened. Um, the R&D lab has finished its research. We now have some research that we can do with our guys here for MMO support. Although apparently it's very risky, so we might not be doing that straight away. Um, let's actually snap over there and get them doing something else. Okay, that's fine. Um, so what are we going to do this time? Our own convention. That's the online distribution. Uh, we've been using the last graphics engine for a long time, so I think this is one that we actually want to do. Um, however, I'm not sure how soon we actually want that finished by. Um, one thing we could do, what happens if we drag the budget up? Oh, that slid it over like that. You see, the points are going up a lot higher now, and if I could predict how long it's going to take 
to get that finished then it might be worth doing for our next game engine although I've got a feeling uh, we might have to give it a miss okay so let's skip on come on okay so not as many as last time 28th again and let's have a look at the amount of money we've made with this game as well we have to slide back over here so game history 52 million okay I don't know <laughs> for some reason I thought it wasn't as much of that if I go up there and have a look at the money we've made yep we have a ton coming through so I think we can actually afford to do this um, R&D Labs research really quickly so we'll leave the budget like that and what I'm gonna do is hmm, I'm probably gonna have to develop yet another game in between before we make our new game engine so I think I'll do that and I'll see you in the next episode so as always thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time